Hello, everyone, and welcome to Madlit Musings. I have back with us today, Melody Carlson. Hi, Melody. I'm so glad to have you. Hi, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. It's great to have you back to start talking about things summer because we're recording this in February. You have a March release coming out that is called Just for the Summer. And I think we're all kind of in the mood for some warm weather. I am. I we, We've got snow here and I'm just, I'm ready for a beach read. Yeah. Yeah. This looks like it's going to be a perfect beach read too. I love the cover. It looks so much fun. But um, we have a switch. This is a story switch, isn't it? Where they swap places. It is. And you know, I love those kind of stories. They are fun. They really are. Oh, I, I've done a few and I, I'll probably do a few more, but <laughs> yeah, it's a swap. <laughs> That's cool. So we have two heroines, um, Ginny and Jacqueline. And it looks like one is more of the outdoorsy type of heroine and the other one's more of the boutique. Am I correct or incorrect? Well, um, not exactly, but yes, okay. you're close. Okay. One, one of the, you know, they're both in the hospitality industry. Okay. And one of them, the Jacqueline is at her grandpa's fishing lodge, which is a little bit run down, a little off the beaten path. And she actually has a degree in hospitality, but she's not highly motivated. <laughs> Aha. <laughs> That's an understatement. And then our other character, Jenny, is managing this really shishi um, boutique hotel in Seattle and doing a really good job of it. And only she has a really cranky boss who doesn't appreciate her. And the cranky boss kind of thinks she runs things because she owns the hotel. And, okay. you know, so she, poor Jenny, she doesn't have a degree, but she has got the experience. She's been doing it for a lot of years because her mom died when she was, you know, just in college and she had a younger sister and she had to help raise her younger sister, you know, by getting a job. And then she actually puts her younger sister through med school and she's kind of ready. Her, her sister's just graduating and she's thinking, finally, she and Jillian can maybe buy a little house, have a life and, you know, yeah, her, and, and it all falls apart. Oh, no. It's kind of like life, you know, <laughs> yeah, life has a way of doing that where it just kind of goes, oh, you know what? Here's this domino. Let me push it and see what happens. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So you have Jenny and Jacqueline and then they're going to switch positions. Essentially, how does that switch come about? Or is that too much of a spoiler question? No, not spoiler. OK, um, well, when when um, Jenny finds out that Jillian's going to go and she's she's had a rough, rough day with her boss and she's just totally disenchanted and she's been you know saving money and living in this really crummy apartment with a not your <laughs> most ideal roommate oh no and so then uh on the other end of things over in idaho um jacqueline is just disenchanted with the whole fishing lodge thing and she's she does as little as possible okay and doesn't want to be there okay and so she's really hunting for a job swap on this new website called job swap uh -huh. and um so jenny just in her you know just happens to look and there's jacqueline saying you know i'll trade you know and and to to jenny you know in the city and kind of sick of city living i think i think she is a country girl at heart she doesn't know it. it though she's not okay. done it sure but it's highly appealing yeah and so the swap happens that sounds so cool okay so i have to ask is there actually such a thing as an online job swap places where you can do that I have no idea okay <laughs> but shouldn't there be <laughs> I was gonna say because if there is I'm game and it's just it's just for the summer okay like, you know so they think you know uh -huh. or not even the whole summer I think I think they agreed to two months or something I can't remember what it was but yeah just for the summer and yeah that sounds that sounds utterly fabulous and especially if you're really like in Jenny's situation needing some quiet and to have the boss off your back per se yeah she's just fed up and you know she probably wouldn't have stayed there as long as she did except for two things raising her sister and mm -hmm. getting her through college and then she doesn't have a degree right so that she's looked before but everybody wants a hospitality degree mm -hmm. but um her to me in my opinion experience can be more valuable than a degree mm -hmm. and in her case that's true that's true okay and then Jacqueline is just now is she kind of has she just sort of been thrown into her situation because it's a family lodge I think she couldn't get another job 
<laughs> no, I, I, I can't really remember that part of her backstory, but that's okay. She, she's she's a little bit entitled. I mean, okay, yeah. okay. So it's time for Jacqueline to leave the woods and put on some heels and hit the boutique and see what happens. Yeah, that sounds fun. Okay, and so then in true swaparoo form, do they also swap love interests, or is there a love angle to the story? There is, and they kind of sort of do. I don't want to give it all away. Mm -hmm. The only thing that has probably really kept Jacqueline at the fishing lodge is this one um, fishing guide who comes every summer. Okay. And he's got to deal with her grandpa where he gets, you know, he's also a writer. He's also a lawyer. And so he comes there with hopefully that gets writing time and Mm -hmm. his love of the river and um but he has like zero interest in Jacqueline <laughs> oh, she's gorgeous you know and yeah she's fun and she's kind of funny and all of that but it's, it's not his cup of tea mm-hmm. and meanwhile at the Seattle boutique hotel the son of the owner who's also the CFO okay it is just has this mad crush on Jenny okay and she, she's he's not her cup of tea so put put two and two together and you get four divided by two and you get you get you get two different couples we'll just have to see who ends up with whom (laughs) yes yeah that sounds cool that sounds cool okay so in idaho at this fishing lodge so let's go there first we'll travel to idaho did you get to research at a real fishing lodge or where did where did the idea of a fishing lodge come from well i didn't actually i i i did do a trip to Idaho but I didn't really research the place there but where where we live we have a lot of that sort of thing we're in the mountains Oregon Mm -hmm. and my friends actually run a fishing lodge that's kind of real similar okay there's theirs isn't as run down as this but so I know clarification (laughs) yeah in case you're listening in case you're listening yours is beautiful (laughs) not my fictional one (laughs) yes and in fact I have even volunteered to help manage it sometimes oh cool because Sometimes they just have a hard time finding help. But I just think it'd be interesting and mm-hmm. fun. And I could probably get some writing in and ha- my husband and I could hang out. And, yeah. And we've stayed before. So anyway, probably that was good enough research for me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now I've stayed at a boutique hotel once uh, or twice, actually. Um, not by choice. It was a work thing. Um, so it was one of those things where you're you're kind of lucky enough to stay at a boutique hotel. And I'll be honest, I was scared to turn the faucet on in the bathroom for fear it would break. Like it was so beautiful. Oh. Like I was, I'm not oh. such a country girl. Like it's it's more like the, do I dare touch it? Like, ugh. ooh, I put a <laughs> fingerprint on it. Let me quick polish that. <laughs> I've stayed in a few too, and they are, especially the ones that are really well run. Mm-hmm. And I have. A cousin who um, managed a gorgeous one in San Francisco, and we stayed there a couple times. And he, he, it was so amazingly run. It was so amazingly run that he put a bowl of goldfish in each room, and it would get changed out with each guest. So the water was just always fresh, and the goldfish looked gorgeous. And you know, wow. and besides, like fresh flowers and all of the amenities yeah. and every mm-hmm. everything that you could want or dream. And mm-hmm. So that was pretty cool. And yeah, I've stated it a few, but his hey, rate's the highest. I was going to say, his sounds pretty, pretty nice. The one I stayed in when we walked into the room, it was, it, it was a, a restored chocolate factory. Oh, wow. Right. So from like but the they 1800s, had on your pillow, they right? did, they had delightful chocolate on the pillow. And the, every um, person who went and prepared the room would leave a handwritten welcome note. Wow. Um, and it was all with this little bow and then a chocolate and a handwritten welcome note. And the, the bed was just like perfect. And you felt like maybe I should sleep on the floor because it's too pretty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, coming from a background where you throw a sleeping bag out in the woods and camp, that's <laughs> that's what I grew up doing. So going mm-hmm. to one of those, I was like, oh, my, this is amazing. So you would I, like the fishing lodge. <laughs> I was just going to say, I'd probably feel more at home at the fishing lodge, even if it was a little run down. I'd be like, OK. Okay, this is this is okay. I can deal with this. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, fun. So with the two women, obviously they're swapping places. They're kind of discontent with their lives. Um, what type of journeys do they go on? Are they parallel journeys or are they both dealing with really separate issues? 
kind of, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's some parallel to it because mm -hmm. they both probably have, you know, some past history that isn't totally resolved like we all do. Right. But um, with the, the main differences, well, <laughs> okay, the biggest differences that I use between them mm -hmm. are that, um, that Jenny has just been a workaholic and she's had mm -hmm. to be, she mm -hmm. took over, you know, kind of for her mom mm -hmm. and just, I mean, she literally started in the laundry room at the hotel okay. and worked her way clear through everything, which is one of the reasons she really understood management mm -hmm. because she did every single job there was to be had there. And um, so she's, just, she's a workaholic and she doesn't have a personal life and she's been a little bit of a martyr and, you know, not trying to be, but, you know, just forced into it. Mm -hmm. And Jacqueline, on the other hand, because of just some troubles with her own home growing up, I think, you know, she was a little bit spoiled. I mean, she was spoiled mm -hmm. and entitled and, and, but didn't have maybe the emotional needs met that she needed. But, um, so, but she's real fun loving. She's really like, you know, this is all, we're here to have fun and why is okay. this fun at fishing mm -hmm. lodge? And so, they they're at opposite ends there and and i don't want to give everything away but right. it, eventually they end up in a situation where they kind of teach each other some new tricks new tricks, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. New tricks to survive life in places where you're not necessarily wanting to be in life right exactly yeah or you, or you don't understand it or whatever yeah mm -hmm. yeah mm-hmm yeah, it's difficult sometimes to accept where where God plops us in life. There's no question about that. <laughs> yeah, and and usually there's a good reason. There usually is. Know. There usually <laughs> is. There usually is. But then the question becomes, how do you get through it? You know, like how do you how do you process where you're at? Like I I read in you know the New Testament where the Apostle Paul's like, I have learned to be content in all things, and I always added the dot dot dot. Well, good for you, Paul. <laughs> to the end of it because I was always like I'm not sure I've gotten to that part yet where I can be content in all things you want to just... oh, we might have locked up here see here uh, anyway <laughs> i just paused i was like oh no i, I was reacting too long and I was, I was talking too much and it stopped <laughs> yeah but yeah i'm not sure where we left off now but that's okay we can edit out i'm not sure either oh we were talking about contentment Oh yes. Contentment. Contentment. So do you, how, how do you, how do you resolve contentment? Melody share with me. How do you be content in all things? <laughs> well, you know, it's weird, but I kind of think I was born with some sort of inner contentment. I know that mm. sounds weird, mm -hmm. but I grew up in a dysfunctional divorced home and my sister, older sister was just always striving, striving 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 wanted you know she was more like Jacqueline <laughs> not really but she wanted um you know more and better and mm -hmm. did we freeze up again we did just for a second anyway <laughs> okay and I was more like I would I would make good I know it was yeah yeah yeah. Well, and that's just it. I mean, I think the Lord kind of prepares us for life too, and puts in us the spirit that we need to get through the circumstances that we're going to go through. So I think if you were born with a spirit of contentment, that's a blessing. Take it. <laughs> no, I mean, sometimes I would feel bad because I think, well, is that settling, you know, mm. but I don't think it was, mm. I really, cause I, you know, even as a small child, you know, it just, just you just you make do and and personally as I got older and even as an adult I kind of found the the challenges kind of fun you know like problems yeah. to solve although oh, I'm sure. like I, sometimes I want to go lord enough you know 
<laughs> yeah, you're like, I like to solve problems, Lord. That didn't mean I wanted a ton of them. Yeah, not 24-7 anyway. Yeah, yeah. Like one every five years. Five years would be good. <laughs> oh, that would be so nice. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. funny. So this book comes out in March and um, is available everywhere. Books are available. People can find them on the shelves. Now, is this a standalone or is this part of the trilogy or? It's it's a standalone. Okay. I mean, it. I've been doing kind of these light summer reads that mm-hmm. look, they look compatible, but they have nothing to do with each other. <laughs> okay. All right. So we can easily grab this one, throw it in a backpack or a purse or a tote bag. Take it with us wherever we're going this summer and have a good read. (laughs) Well, wonderful. Yes. Yes. Good. Well, the question on the back of the book says, if you lived in a different place and had a different job, couldn't you have a different life? So you'll want to pick up this book by Melody Carlson called Just for the Summer. And it is available March of 2024. And uh, Melody, it's been so much fun having you on the podcast again. Thank you. I enjoyed it. You're always fun to talk to. (laughs) Well, we'll have you the next time in the next book, because I'm sure there's going to be another one. Yep. A Christmas novella in September. (laughs) Here we go. All right. We'll get ready for Christmas. (laughs) Yeah.